Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Minister of Health of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, Dr. Hubert Minnis. Thank you very much. I adopt the protocol that had already been established. However, I'd like to welcome the Prime Minister of St. Martin, my colleague ministers from the Bahamas as well as the region, delegates, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I am pleased to bring to the podium the leader of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, the Right Honorable Hubert Alexander Ingram, to deliver the keynote address at this, the 2011 Caribbean HIV Conference. In 2001, the CARICOM meeting held here in New Providence and chaired by the Prime Minister, our Prime Minister Ingram, enunciated the principle that the health of a nation is the wealth of the nation and promoted a partnership institution to respond to the regional epidemic of HIV AIDS. The Right Honorable Hubert Ingram became Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas in 1992 and served this country well as Prime Minister for two consecutive terms. He voluntarily chose not to seek re-election as leader of his party, the Free National Movement, in 2002. But in 2005, he was pressed into service again and led his party to electoral victory in 2007, becoming the Prime Minister again in that year, May 2007. Prime Minister Ingram was born on the island of Grand Bahama and raised in humble circumstances in North Abaco community of Cooperstown. He has been elected on seven consecutive occasions as the representative of that, his hometown constituency. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podium the Prime Minister of the Bahamas, the Right Honorable Hubert Alexander Ingram. Thank you, Dr. Menes, Madam Premier, welcome to the Bahamas. I adopt the salutations previously given, as the hour is getting late. To simply say that the Bahamas is pleased to host the first Caribbean HIV conference to discuss the HIV-related matters in relation to the region. Followed upon the determination or the recognition in the United States in 1981 of AIDS and the first report of uh, an infection in the Caribbean in 82, the Bahamas saw its first infection, confirmed infection in 1983. It has resulted in various debilitating diseases and premature death in people during the prime years of your life, devastating families and communities. The Bahamas recognized early the value of treating HIV and AIDS, even before the discovery of the drugs we use today. In that regard, I'd like to say a special thanks to a former Minister of Health to the Bahamas, Dr. Norman Gay, and to Dr. Perry Gomez for the part they've played. <laughs> 
Sustainable, high-quality prevention, treatment, care, and support services that are accessible by all residents of the Bahamas living with or affected by HIV AIDS, regardless of legal status or ability to pay, is the basic mission of a national HIV AIDS program in the Bahamas. Care is provided for all in need, irrespective of their immigration status. This includes clinical care and support, diagnostic testing, and treatment. Since AIDS was discovered in newborns in 1989, antenatal care treatment have been important in preventing mother-to-child transmission. Such care and treatment are provided by the government free of charge to all public and private HIV-positive pregnant women in the Bahamas. I'm happy to inform also that in 2010 in the Bahamas, there was no detected transmission of HIV to infected mothers to their babies. Notwithstanding the decline in new cases and a major reduction in mother-to-child transmission and decreasing mortality, AIDS remains a leading cause of death among Bahamian men and women aged 25 to 44. The Ministry of Health has been proactive in reaching persons at risk for HIV infection, but there are still significant challenges in accessing vulnerable and at-risk individuals for diagnosed care and treatment. Some of these challenges include stigma and discrimination as HIV AIDS was associated with young gay men and intravenous drug users. Subsequently, immigration status, language barriers, and economic inequality contributed to the persistence of the stigma attached to the disease. Notwithstanding tremendous strides are being achieved in diffusing fears with contact with HIV AIDS infected persons. Still though, significant stigma and sometimes discrimination persist. This in turn creates a significant barrier to detection, care and treatment. The Bahamas has been a leader in developing legislation to protect the rights of minorities and others living with HIV. In 1991, the Bahamas decriminalized homosexuality between consenting adults. And uh, the Bahamas was the only Caribbean country to sign the Paris Declaration in 1994, which set global standards for HIV and human rights. We also legislated strengthened protection from discrimination for HIV positive individuals in the workplace in 2001. Assistance from international donor agencies has aided significantly in the care and treatment side of the fight against HIV AIDS. The Clinton Foundation assisted in program development and made, their, made the Bahamas their hub for the region. The Bahamas is the first country in this region to benefit from negotiations by the Clinton Foundation with generic pharmaceutical companies like Medfarm to supply affordable quality drugs and promote universal access to antiviral treatments. We recently signed a partnership framework, PAPA agreement with the United States, joining 13 other countries in the region. Funds received are to be spent on education and prevention, laboratory enhancement and strategic information. Many of the activities used in these funds will collect evidence of the weaknesses in our local programs so sustained action can be developed to achieve national goals. The United States has recently approved the Caribbean HIV AIDS Training Initiative, Char 2, the implementation of a regional approach to assist the health sector's workforce and its beneficiaries mitigate the impact of HIV AIDS in 12 Caribbean Regional Partnership Framework Antigua and Barbuda, the Bahamas, Barbados, Belize, Dominica, Grenada, Jamaica, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, Trinidad and Tobago, and Suriname. 
The goal of CHAR2 is to improve HIV-AIDS-related health service delivery outcomes through the development of continuing education programs, integrating pre-service and in-service training of the health workforce. Every country in the globe is involved in containing this disease. Indeed, the sixth Millennium De Development Goals focuses on stopping and reversing the spread of AIDS, HIV AIDS by 2015. Global funding is increasing, but global need is growing even faster. Through unprecedented global attention intervention efforts, the rate of HIV infection has slowed and prevalence rates have leveled off globally. Yet, despite the progress, the total number of people living with HIV continues to rise. There is growing recognition that certain groups are at particular risk of HIV, including men who have sex with men, injecting drug users, and commercial sex workers. The impact of HIV AIDS on women and girls has been particularly devastating. Women and girls now comprise 50% of those aged 15 and older living with HIV. The impact of HIV AIDS on children and young people is severe and growing problem. It's a severe and growing problem. As we move forward in treating HIV AIDS in the region, we acknowledge that there are still significant challenges in accessing vulnerable and at risk individuals for diagnosis, care, and treatment. Reports today record a shift in the distribution of new cases by race, ethnicity, among new cases occurring. In addition, the largest proportion increase in the disease is occurring in cases attributed to heterosexual transmission. There are some notable success stories of survival rates. Here in the Bahamas, there are six young people who were born HIV positive, who are still alive and living relatively normal lives. One is currently a student in college. At least two of the others have produced children of their own. These stories make us feel good, but much more work is still ahead. The best hope for containment of HIV AIDS is the reduction in the number of new infections. We must scale up the prevention activities to the proven successful if we are to reverse the AIDS pandemic. At the same time, providing treatment and care of people living with HIV AIDS remains absolutely essential. The government of the Bahamas is pleased to host the 2011 HIV conferences under the same strengthening evidence of to achieve sustainable action. We are pleased also to collaborate with others in the region in confronting this epidemic. I wish you every success in your continued deliberations and trust that you'll find some time to enjoy our Bahamian hospitality beyond the venue of this conference here on Paradise Island. Thank you and good night. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back our conference co-chair, Professor Daisy Haley.